Virulent misogyny, misogynoir, trolling and hate speech are also becoming major new problems, often facilitated by online social media platforms. Like other groups in public life, such as politicians and academics, women journalists are disproportionately subject to vicious verbal attacks and threats of rape, torture or murder. In a powerful article on the cost of reporting while female, Anne Peterson recounts some of the messages she and her female colleagues have received, commenting that abuse and menace have become a way of life for women in journalism. This assessment is borne out by all the available research. A Demos study in 2014 found that female journalists on Twitter received more than three times as much abuse as their male counterparts. Two years later, in the biggest analysis ever conducted on this topic, the Guardian newspaper examined 70 million comments left over a 10-year period on its website. It revealed that of the 10 journalists who received most persistent trolling and most vicious comments, eight were women and two were black men. This was all the more shocking given that the majority of opinion writers and columnists were white men, three of the 10 writers attracting the most crude, bigoted and vile comments were gay. The study found that articles written by women got more blocked, that is abusive or disruptive, comments. Significantly, the more male-dominated a section or topic was, such as sport or technology, the more abusive comments the women who wrote there got. On top of this, articles about feminism attracted very high levels of abusive comments, as did articles about rape. Feminist writer Jessica Valenti asks us to imagine what this is like. Another example of this comes from the shocking revelations in 2019 about a group of 30 male journalists in France who systematically harassed and trolled their female colleagues over many years. The group, known on Facebook as the League LOL, was behind waves of online insult, mockery and harassment aimed at women. In one case, a member of the group made a pornographic photo montage of a feminist journalist and circulated it on Twitter. In another, the group made a so-called prank call to another woman journalist, pretending to be interviewing her for a position. The recording was then in turn put online for mockery. According to the New York Times, the group was suspected for many years, but its existence wasn't proven until public opinion changed in the wake of Me Too and the group was exposed. Increasing numbers of journalists are speaking out against the culture of sexist, racist, homophobic and transphobic abuse and attack, particularly women, people of colour and LGBTQ journalists. Here's Suzanne Franks, Head of Journalism at City, telling us why she thinks this is an urgent topic. I think the, the issue that really bothers me the most at the moment, and I've done some work on that this year, is um, online abuse actually, and, and the whole way that um, uh, we now see these extraordinary vitriol online and so much directed at women and at, at um, female, female journalists. That, that's something which I think we need to really um, you know, put a lot more effort in, into to, to working on and, and to, to coming up with, with strategies. I, mean, I was at um, uh, a big conference on this recently and uh, we heard from women all over the world actually, um, female journalists, and it is quite extraordinary the, the, the sort of what, what's actually going on. Um, so I think that's, that's, that is the problem that really that worries me most at the moment, which, which I think we need, we need to confront. For some, however, social media represents an opportunity for women, not a threat. Here's Glenda Cooper again. With user-generated content, with social media, you know, what are the issues around gender um, in this? And obviously, you know, it's clear that you know, for women, social media can be you know a really aggressive place. You know, we've heard of Gamergate. We've seen of all the abuse that um, a lot of 
um, prominent women get um, as a result of this. So it hasn't been this kind of brave new world where user-generated content and social media has opened up journalism in a way that um, we would, you know, we would hope. You know, having said that, you know, who are the major users of social media? If you look at anything like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you know, the percentages all show that women um, are the primary users. And I think in that case, we must be seeing more content um, from women being produced. And, um, you know, there, if you think of some of the kind of the, the big viral um, videos um, that we can think of in recent times. So, you know, from the very serious, like Di Diamond Re Reynolds um, live streaming the shooting of her boyfriend, uh, Fernando Castile, or to the, to the slightly less serious, you know, the Chewbacca mom going viral. Uh, we do see women occupying this space and uh, making a role from, for themselves. Um, the, the interesting thing is, can they overcome sort of the very aggressive sort of male like sort of feeling in some of these spaces that tends to mean that women will often uh, draw back from commenting?